What's happening, Crypto Farm? Happy, happy Tuesday. Good morning and welcome back to Love for Crypto. I'm Scott. It's a pleasure to have you here and I appreciate you taking time out to consume the content. So thank you. This morning, I want to talk about the SEC Commissioner, Hester Pierce. A um, couple of different headlines. She said, um, some are saying XRP might not be a security. And then another headline's got it doesn't have to be a security. Um, we'll check a couple of articles out. Check the description for the actual interview that she had with Bloomberg and watch that. It's about six minutes. Um, I don't think I'm going to play it. I debated playing it for you, but just go and watch it yourself if you want to watch it. So, when I saw XRP's regulatory status during a recent Bloomberg interview, the US Securities and Exchange Commission's Hester Pierce said that a cryptocurrency doesn't necessarily have to be a security if its issuer gets sued by the agency. Pierce, who has earned the crypto mum Moncure, or Monica, should I say, for the vocal support of the crypto industry, claims an in-fuck-off update, claims an enforcement action means that the asset was being sold as an investment contract. So when we think about a crypto asset as being a security, what we're doing is we're saying it's being sold as part of an investment contract, which means that there are promises being made around the sale of this asset. It doesn't mean that the asset itself necessarily has to be a security. It means it was being sold as a security. I feel like these people could just go away, me. They have no bearing on my life at all, really. And everyone's going to say, oh, no, no, fucking America, why are you doing videos about it? And if it got no bearing, no, 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 no. The outcome really doesn't really fucking affect me. I'm still still using XRP, me. I give a shit what happens in America. So Pierce believes the SEC needs to provide more clarity before the agency spends too much time on non-fraud cases. Ripple insists XRP is not a secured, uh, not an investment contract. Distributed ledger provider Ripple was taken to court back in May together with its two high-profile executives, Chris Larson and Brad Garlinghouse, over their unregistered XRP sales that allegedly violated federal securities laws. The defendants, however, argue that its sales and distribution of the cryptocurrency were not investment contracts since XRP holders do not have any stake in the company. Which is right. There's no promise to get anything out of the company for buying XRP. At least the way we do. I don't know who purchased this 1.3 billion, whatever it was, back in the day. But it is... It is what it is. They fucking sued him. So we'll... Um, it doesn't have to be a security. Might not be a security. Doesn't have to be a security. SEC's Crypto Mum says Ripple's XRP doesn't have to be a security. When we think about a crypto asset as being a security, what we're doing is we're saying it's being sold as part of an investment contract. Doesn't have to be. I'm gonna play the fucking video, guys. Apologies, because I had to walk away to actual words. So, refresh. Talking about cryptocurrency today. What can you expect from the SEC when it comes to crypto regulation? And what are your top priorities? Well, it's a little too early for me to tell you what to expect in terms of what our new chairman is planning to do on crypto. He has been quite outspoken already about uh, wanting to have some oversight of the spot markets, whether that's the SEC or another federal regulatory agency. Um, but with respect to what we're going to do at the SEC, I, I hope that we can provide clarity in, in a few different areas. One would be, I put out a, a token safe harbor to give some clarity around token distribution events. Um, I think we need to approve an exchange traded product based on Bitcoin. And frankly, um, we've gotten new applications in on uh, based on ETH as well. 
And then we need to provide some clarity around custody for regulated entities, so for um, broker dealers and investment advisors. So some, those are some of the areas I'd like us to, to take action in. Now, the SEC filed a lawsuit in December against Ripple Labs, creator of the XRP token. And, and, and the claim is that, it's, that XRP is an unregistered security. Why did this happen now? Well, I can't speak to any litigation that's ongoing, um, but I can say that we um, have been bringing enforcement actions now in this space since 2017. I anticipate that as long as there's activity in this space, there, there will be enforcement in this space. But that said, I've been very clear about the fact that I think we need to provide regulatory clarity um, before we spend too much more time on, on enforcement where there's not fraud involved. So that leads to the question, XRP has been on the market for eight years. When does a digital asset become a security or maybe something else? And how does the SEC determine that? Well, I think that is a difficult question. And it's something that I've also, again, tried to get us to, to be a little bit more precise. When we think about a, a crypto asset, a digital asset as being a security, what we're doing is is we're saying that we think it's part, it's being sold as part of an investment contract, um, which means that there are promises being made around the sale of that asset. It doesn't mean that the asset itself necessarily has to be a security. It means that it was being sold as a security. Then the question becomes, at what point can someone sell that asset as a, not as a security? And that is a very difficult line. When it comes to Elon Musk in particular, though, do you find it at all problematic that one person whose company owns a lot of cryptocurrency, in, in this case Bitcoin, can have such tremendous power over, over the market? Is there a problem with that? Again, my, my focus as a securities regulator is to try to regulate the securities markets in a way that protects investors and protects the integrity of that marketplace. I always encourage people to make their own decisions, regardless of what anyone, whether it's a celebrity or whether it's their brother or their mother, tells them about a security or a, a, an asset of any kind, make your own decision, do your own analysis. And if you're not able to do that, then go to a financial professional or another professional if it's if it's you know a non-financial asset. Go and get the help you need to make the decision and to do so wisely. What do you think the odds are for a central bank digital currency? Well, certainly there will be a, a CBDC, whether or not from the U.S. I don't. I, I I I'm not the one to to answer that question. The Fed has has said that they're they're thinking about it, and so I expect we'll see the, the um, fruits of that thought um, as, as, they, as they try to engage with the public on it. Uh, other central banks are coming up with CBDCs, and, and I think it's a natural progression of, um, of money that we'll, we'll see people moving into CBDCs. Now, there are a lot of questions of, around them. There are questions around privacy. There are questions around um, whether people will feel comfortable using a CBDC or would prefer to use private stable coins. And, and those are questions that certainly in the United States we're going to have to wrestle with because we really do care about financial privacy. What about what's happening in other countries? When you look at China, does China have too much influence on cryptocurrency markets? I think one of the benefits of crypto is that it allows people all over the world to participate. Um, and crypto markets are very diverse, and so... The, the level of participation by different people in different countries varies a lot, I think, across different crypto assets. So you kind of need to think about it in that way. But, but another piece of this that I would bear in mind is that crypto activity can move very easily. It's much harder for um, any particular country or particular group of people in any particular country to, to, to retain control over any particular decentralized system, as long as it really is decentralized. Does it mean that crypto could be a real systemic risk to the traditional financial world? 
the traditional financial world has has obviously brought society really important benefits and i think as we see crypto mature it's going to um it's going to open more doors to more people to participate with the financial system and that's a good thing that's something that we should encourage right and so do we have to watch out for risks? That's what regulators do all the time. We're gonna be watching for risks no matter whether they come from the traditional financial system, whether they come from the decentralized financial system, or whether they come from some combination of the two. Um, but I think these these concerns that there's something inherent about crypto that should have us should have us scared from a systemic perspective are overblown. No. <clears throat> I didn't necessarily hear them headlines, XRP might not be security, according to SEC Commissioner. I didn't hear her actually say XRP might not be security. I mean, was I not listening properly? SEC's Crypto Mom says Ripple's XRP doesn't have to be a security. I didn't hear her say that line either. These headlines need to fucking stop. Saying someone says something that she didn't actually fucking say needs to fucking stop. She's right. They do need clarity. They need it fucking quick. The lagging behind the Americans now, it can't become much more of a shit show, in my opinion. She also mentioned CBDCs and people potentially preferring to use private stable coins. And CBDCs, you can bet your ass they will. Bankers, you, we don't want you anymore, mate. Fuck off. Fuck off. They got me. Yeah. Fuck off. That's it. That's my new sign. I want to see a banker. Oh, all right, bank up. You're all right, mate. You're all right, mate. Fuck off. No one wants you here anymore. <laughs> We don't want them stealing off us anymore. We don't want them controlling our funds anymore. We don't want them controlling the flaming planet and our governments anymore. Capitalism, corporations buying people off with our brown envelopes. You saw what a shit show Brexit became. All because of corrupt politicians, bankers and corporations. Fuck off. So yeah, you're damn right a lot of people are going to look to private stable coins over CBDCs. Who the fuck in the right mind is going to trust a central bank with all the value? Don't get me wrong, you're occasionally going to need to go back into the banking system if you want to transact with someone who only resides in the banking and um, current financial system. But the majority of people with a red screwed on will have the majority of wealth in their control on decentralised networks. As for XRP, I've still set out at September. Just wait till September. It's really not far away now. See what starts happening from September in a run up to November. Look out for the SEC case being over, being settled, whatever happens. And I, and I think that's kind of a hint to say that probably be settled soon, whether Ripple gets fined or not, blah, blah, blah. And then just because we have they have sued them and they have settled doesn't make it a security. It's then going to get some clarity. And hopefully, at that point, the market starts... Uh, Starts to really gain some speed and start maturing because we have got the migration. The migration is underway. Migration to a new messaging system within Swift, to a new way of sending value across borders. And every central bank in the world has to get on board within the next couple of years. It's about to move somewhat rotten, I think. Either way, we've just got to be patient. And um, let it let, let, let the chips fall where they may. And on that note, I've got 
throw to work still. But hopefully not for long. Investing in yourself, investing in and out of value. Turn hobbies into revenue or get enough passive income to live a life of hobbies. If you can get enough passive income to pay for any hobby you want to do and just live a live a sick life that you want to live, that is the fucking end game. Other than that, turn your hobbies into revenue and they'll pay for themselves. Yeah? Health, wealth and happiness. Get healthier, get wealthier, get happier. That's what we want. Yeah? So get investing. Yourself, your health, your wealth, the internet of value, live long and oddly all till you're ready to let it go. Yeah. Wishing health and happiness to you and yours. Enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you on the next one. We love crypto, we love Zert, and we love you. So take care of yourself. Peace.